All right, I'm Evan from StandUpPaddleSurf.net. And I'm Robert with Blue Planet Surf. And we're back for another board meeting here at Blue Planet Surf. This time it's Welcome not as hot, but you know, I got the tank You're top. You're still so. sweaty, no. It, it is hot. <laughs> this, this shop is always hot. It's a hot place to be. It's okay, it's, um, it's uh, green. Yeah, but today we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, YouTube channels. So Evan's kind of um, the expert on that. And, and uh, I've been, we've been doing our Blue Planet Surf YouTube channel and kind of learned a lot of things going going along on how to you know make you know how to increase your viewership how to get more subscribers and uh you know how to make your channel more popular basically and the really cool thing about youtube is that you can monetize your videos so even like on our blue planet surf channel where um you know we're basically advertising for blue planet putting a lot of good content out there you know for free for people to see but we also get ad revenue so the little ads that play before the video starts and the little ads that pop up on the bottom of the video you can just close them or skip the video but um that get every time somebody watches it you get like a, a, um, a few cents or whatever it's like a um, small portion of the i mean i think it's 50 percent of the revenue that google it's 55 percent of the net of the net for the um cpm yeah. yeah but it can add up like on on our channel right now we make like in the winter time about 100 something a month in the summer it's like over 300 dollars a month in, in ad revenue so oh your um, cpm is good it's it's not a ton yeah. of money but it's enough to buy all this um, camera gear at <laughs> least you know and uh and it's kind of fun to to watch and and try to make it grow and we've had a lot of growth on our channel too like year to year it's like oh, it's been almost doubling every year the, the oh your growth rate right now is awesome yeah it's awesome within the last year it's been a huge difference you're jumps are really big now yeah it's like um yeah, yeah. It's, it's been doubling so it's kind of almost exponential yeah and um and then we actually had like i had youtube um contact me about like helping me to optimize our channel and stuff like that because oh, yeah. i mean the like more somebody I, actually contacted you or like yeah. a mass kind of email well they emailed me and then they set up an appointment and I, I would talk to like a specialist and she gave me some good pointers on how to increase our, our uh, make our channel more what productive. you say? so some of the tips were um one thing is like the the description of the videos is where we're lacking a little bit so you know sometimes i would just put like a, a one sentence description or whatever and she said that's actually pretty important in the in the um in the algorithms and the search al algorithms so if it's more for how you rank yeah. or more because when people are looking at it um well most of the views on youtube actually come from like um from suggested videos right so if someone watches a video on like drones and surfing if you have a video that's about drones and surfing, it's chances are good that you're gonna, you're just gonna be suggested as the next video to mm -hmm. watch, right? So, um, but you know, if, if you just put drones in the in the tags or whatever, it's it's not as strong as having it in the description as well. So you wanna this video is about drones flying over the surf, over the water, blah blah, and use as many descriptive keywords in the description as you can, because huh. um, and but it still has to be like regular sentences, but you wanna kind of um, put put a lot of content in that and there she says just write a couple of paragraphs because oh. even though you, you don't see it really on YouTube if they click show more then they can read it and and they and the algorithms use that description to, to rank it in terms of how how um, to suggest it you know? so that technique is called keyword stuffing so what you would do kind of in the older days for search engine optimization on websites is you would stuff keywords within all of the content, the header and so on. I right. thought that it was less, um, that's why having a good domain name also, like a, the domain name as your keyword kind of made a difference. Right. That's why it's standupaddlesurf.net, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of something else.com. Right. The, um, but I thought that they had changed that, but I, okay, that's good. Well, I'm, that's I'm what she told me. That. Okay. And then she said also like, um, on your channel, if you if you, your channel picture to put in there, yeah. you know, to to make it real to to make it a real good picture, and also to suggest you know to subscribe or and then the, like she suggested we should um, advertise that we we're gonna post a video every week, you know. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, so we we started doing that. We have like new videos posted weekly. So so you kind of she said to tell people you're gonna do it every week, or yeah. she just said do it. Put that in the header. So oh. it, on, in our header, it says hmm. you know we. You know, check. You know, subscribe and new new videos posted weekly. So that way, you get you know, um, you get like return return customers basically. You know, create hmm. create. You just put then, that into you know, your on some, your channel yeah, art, on the or channel, you're putting it in the actual the, video. The channel header um, art. You know, yeah, it says it in on there. So 
What and about in the video? You're putting it in the video? You can say it in the videos too, you know, and then she also said, yeah, at the end of the videos okay. or somewhere in the video, it suggests that, you know, um, like our video, um, please subscribe and so on. If you can grow your subscriber base, that's probably the biggest thing to inc um, improve your channel because mm -hmm. the subscribers get the new videos, you know, by email or, or suggested videos. Um, so they all, the, your subscriber base right now on, on Blue Planet Surf, we have almost 3,000 subscribers. So that, those. That's like an, yeah. you doubled in the last year. Yeah, more than, yeah, more than, more than doubled, doubled yeah. yeah, the subscriber yeah. base. And then we've had, um, you know, we're like at 1.2 million views, um, you know, so yeah, that's... Yeah, you're on a roll. You're starting to go like this. Well, I mean, it's always like this summer and then oh, yeah. winter, summer, winter. But every year that, that peak goes higher and the low goes higher, so... I, I wonder mean, if that's with YouTube in general, because I'm finding that on... So we have different channels too. My kids have a Many Hoonies channel, manyhoonies.net. You can go there and check it out. And I know summertime, especially August, was like, boom! And then it started coming down yeah. from that point. And I looked at some of the, the data from other channels, even the real popular ones too, and I see that kind of trend. I think Interesting, the maybe summer vacation. <laughs> I don't know if maybe it's that I mean, demographic. I, mean, for, I think for, um, for stand-up, it makes sense because people do that more in the summer, you know? So yeah. in the spring when they're getting into it, then they start looking at videos and stuff. But I mean, we have some really good technique videos. So if, if you're interested in stand-up paddle technique, definitely check out the Blue Planet Surf YouTube channel. It's some, you just I type Blue Planet really Surf one word into there, yeah? Yeah, Blue Planet Surf. Yeah. And, and, or, or just and click the link. Make we'll sure, make a link. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like all the videos you see that you like. <laughs> don't give us a thumbs down. I don't, I, yeah, actually, I, that's something I wanted to talk to. I don't really get people that give you thumbs down. It's like, why are you watching it if you don't like it? And then, and then why do you feel compelled? I mean, I guess in a way it's, it's feedback for us. And it's, oh, people don't want to see this kind of stuff. But, but I mean, to me, it's like, you know, if, if you don't like it, just... Quick, uh, quick I, else, I went yeah. to. You can have haters everywhere, <laughs> right. no matter what. And then it seems like some people is like doing that. Huh? It's like your um, competitors or something. But I noticed that um, I went to a conference called VidCon, and that was for like all YouTube stuff. And it's huge. It's like thousands, like tens of thousands of people, and crazy. Like bottom floor, all these kids. They're following around their favorite stars, and I'm talking like hundreds of them mm -hmm. following like one, like one or two people. It's crazy. But um, in one of the panels, the lady up there was really upset, and she asked the YouTube people, she's like. Why do you have thumbs down? Because anytime we see thumbs down, I get so upset. And she was like getting all emotional. You know, they're like, um, uh, sorry about that. But isn't Facebook going to start letting do thumbs down pretty soon? Yeah, or more different emotions. Like, yeah, I, I, I read about that. Because like, yeah. if someone's like, oh, I'm sick in the hospital, you don't realize like, oh, you like, that's really cool, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah. It's, it's yeah. like, oh, I'm sorry, or yeah. condolences. I'm or having cross-state surgery. Yeah. Like. No. <laughs> yeah. So you don't really know what to do in that case, right? Or yeah, when people have like bad news, you don't really want to like it, right? So <laughs> that kind of makes sense. But yeah, I, I think the negativity is like thumbs down. It's like, why, you know, if you don't like it, just ignore it, right? It I makes mean, you want to go, thumbs down me, thumbs down you. No. <laughs> yeah. I guess maybe if you have thumbs down, you have to identify yourself. <laughs> I know. It's so easy to be anonymous or have some yeah. donkey yeah. fake account or something, but... Some people are just like that, like putting other people down. Whatever. That's like all the trolls out there, right? Whatever. So, yeah, whatever. But whatever. You just gotta ignore that kind of stuff as a YouTube. Um, yeah, you gotta get really thick skin, I think. Yeah. So what? So um, I'm, my my theory is, if we're getting less than ten percent thumbs down, we're doing well, right? So that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. Plus, you think about it. You know, YouTube initially it was just kind of a free repository to store our videos because mm -hmm. it was expensive to store it on our own server and right. slower. But now it's like this, it's like a huge industry in itself. You, where you can get paid by showing your own ads, more or less. You can get paid by creating content. And, and I'm watching kids' channels these days. And the kids' channels, you know, there's a dozen of them earning over, over a dozen of them earning over a million dollars a year. Yeah. Just on YouTube ads. Yeah. And there's, yeah. Isn't like the, the top earner on YouTube is some um, kid in, in Scandinavia somewhere. Oh, that's like, PewDiePie. He's funny. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. like, he's not kid. He's he like 20 something. Oh, yeah. But he, all he does is play videos, right? And then make videos about it. But I mean. He, yeah. He, but I mean, he's funny. He's yeah, like a comedian. Yeah. Kind I haven't, of. I haven't watched it, but I mean, he makes yeah millions of dollars. Super a year, funny. Yeah, so it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So people were ragging on him. They're like, you know, oh my God, PewDiePie made $10 million last year because, and oh, this is ridiculous. All he does is play video games and like film himself playing video games and so on. Uh. But um, his response was the best. He said, look, at the end of the day, I have 9 billion views and that's worth something. Right. 9 billion views. It's worth something. I mean, what do the Kardashians do? They're just 
famous and they get paid to be famous more you know what i mean so what mm. that's celebrity you know you're a celebrity you get paid to be famous so what yeah pewdiepie's funny yeah no i mean and that's cool if you can make something that's like uh, like for a big audience i mean that's awesome but i just wanted to talk a little bit about the future too like i think like youtube is just a, such a cool opportunity to create content for really niche markets you know like before like you know if you if you have some stuff about um stand up paddling is such a small niche market that mm -hmm. you can't really tell you know you can't go to tv and say here i have a program on yeah. stand up paddling it's not going to be enough of an uh, interest but on youtube you can be as niche as you want i mean it could be about like you know kn knitting wool socks or whatever with designs on them i mean there's people that want to see that right so i mean what no matter how niche or or small segment of a market it is there is interest for it you know you just have yep. to yeah and the cool thing too is like there's videos about everything now like if you want to know how to put in a door lock or whatever then you just watch the video and then somebody shows you how to do it right so yeah i was trying to fix my <laughs> weed whacker i was like how do you do this because yeah. it's all like fancy looking and i just pulled out my phone looked at youtube watched two minutes put the yeah. thing back together but you know what you're referring and, to and is because there's <clears throat> there's incentive for private people to do that on their own it's not even the company that made the weed whacker it's probably somebody <clears throat> doing it in yeah. their backyard and they're just doing it because they know they can make a few bucks with the ads right well i don't know if, i mean sometimes <laughs> i think it's ads but yeah. uh, i think a lot of times too it's personal branding right because if they become the go-to person for you know small appliance yeah, repair a lot of businesses too then, then yeah. you know they get yeah. you you get press opportunities you get all kinds of things mm -hmm. based up, upon being kind of the person in your space so right everybody's trying to be the person in their space like the specialist or expert yeah. yeah like who's the expert in your space if you think about real estate or you think about you know anything banking there's typically uh you know a couple of people that pop to mind and that's because they have the best branding um it's same thing works but if you go back about 10 years there was a thing called podcasting that just arised right um there was a rss feed which allowed us to basically subscribe now to content where it would come to us on a um, regular basis and then download you don't have to keep going there and get right, it right, right, right. It um soon. that's where this whole long tail theory came from so chris anderson um i think his name is chris anderson came up with this long tail theory so at, it looks like a a bar it looks like a graph it goes like this where over here is like Britney Spears and who's today like Justin Bieber and whoever you know they have a lot of sales but there's not too many of them mm. whereas you as you curves down to here you have this really long tail of niche kind of things you know smaller yeah. artists and, and independent people and so on but if you take the aggregate sum of the long tail it totally outproduces the, um, the, 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 the the spike portion so that's kind of what you're referring to the long tail thing is it's another thing too with the um with your videos you know you, you have some that get tons of views yeah but then we, there's a lot if you make enough videos even if they get just a few hundred views the total volume of all those that add, really adds up to so um, plus they're yeah. seasonal right so like uh, last night my kids were watching uh, gingerbread house mm. and most of the videos they're watching were you know multiple years old right and they kind of spike so they call these things tent pole events right tent you know what a tent pole it's, it has the pole and has the tent around it mm -hmm. so they, it looks like this so it's like Christmas Right. You know, um, Halloween, um, whatever kind of special event, any kind of news event, it's tentpole. Right. So, like certain songs, right? They come out whack, and then it comes down like that. Right. And that's why you watch like um, parodies of songs, and then they do the parodies on the like like Adele's Hello, right? She has, right? Uh, to, this is December. She's got um, in two months, seven hundred something million views already, right? That's a tentpole spike, and then you mm -hmm. have to see all these parodies around that and right. then they kind of use her um popular her popular yeah, right yeah, so yeah i see kind that of people like techniques. actually like if you have a popular video somebody will like use the exact same title for their video because then they think that they're like there's just gonna yeah come right after yours or something like that which uh, yeah it's kind of interesting how, how youtube works too and it's kind of surprising too which videos become very popular yeah and it's kind of like usually you get like kind of a lot of people watching at first and then it kind of trails off and then some videos start to take off and then they keep going up it's and weird, the yeah. older they get the more yeah. popular they get even though it's really not no longer um you know up-to-date content you know it's like old stuff but because it's so popular it just keeps going up and up so versus that's because other, you're other, suggested you're coming other, yeah, behind really the, popular yeah, stuff but then the other videos just kind of they get some bunch of views and then they go down and they just stay there stay yeah. down and they never get more views so yeah it's so hard it's to gauge of, too yeah and it's yeah. hard to know which ones are going to get popular which ones aren't so you just but if you produce enough then 
I mean, yeah, and it's strange too. Like some of the videos we produce, like get a lot of likes, are really popular, but they just don't get that much volume, you know, yeah. of uh, views. So, but it seems like thou about a thousand views yeah. is kind of the critical. Yeah. yeah. Once you get over a thousand, then it gets suggested more yeah. and more. So that's what I noticed too. So it's kind of yeah, it's but yeah. So I, I mean, what are your kind of your YouTube? Give us your secrets. What, Come what, on. What are your YouTube secrets that you can share? I think that um, so I I really only started focusing on it lately meaning like in the last year or so because I started looking at these headlines of people that were just killing it on YouTube you know millions of viewership kind of a lot of ancillary benefits on it and um, I said you know I gotta, I gotta figure this thing out because I've been on it for so long but really haven't had those kinds of results mm. um, and you said though dude you need to fix your channel art it looks like doo-doo so I was like okay <laughs> got to do that. So what we actually did was we looked at and I don't want to offend anyone but you know hopefully not. But our viewership on standupaddlesurf.net is like 80 something percent men. Yeah, same for ours. So we put a bunch of pictures of women on the thing. Now is that sexist? I don't know, but yeah, it is. <laughs> Robert told me to do it. Okay? So I did it. That's that's how it goes. Yeah. No, so that's what we, you know, you, you just kind of have to target it toward the demographic and right. what I started doing was looking at the um the uh, analytics and seeing okay where are they coming from and so on and trying to kind of adjust pieces and then we've been um, fixing up the thumbnails because some of the thumbnails were uh, actually all of the thumbnails were just auto generated so sometimes it's yeah. a the picture of the ground is really important now. it looked like yeah. just total crap but um, we're starting to update the thumbnails now and making them you know more because the thumbnail is kind of like your um, bill you know your billboard that's that's what yeah. determines whether someone clicks yeah and usually and like if you choose the b one of the thumbnails from your video they give you like three options like you, you can take these three screen yeah. screens from the from your video a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just create a, a thumb like yep. I'll create a thumbnail that I use as the main picture and it's like a book you know you, the cover of a book people are gonna pick up a book because it looks interesting yep. right not because what's in it right so a lot of times, uh, like yeah, the the thumbnail is super important. That makes a difference. Yeah. It makes yeah. a big. I think thumbnail makes a huge difference. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thumbnail, title, so descriptions are making it. The tags, which actually don't show up, but you do it on the back end. Right. I um I also found out, and I don't know if this is hundred percent true or what, but when you initially upload the video with the information, description, tags, and so on, if you don't, if it's if it's published as like unlisted or so on, because it's, you're gonna schedule it. Mm -hmm. then that's what they take so if you change your description after like their tags and description then um, it, it won't take the same way it does in the, in the initial part oh so you they, do the initial right the in, it indexes right off the bat huh. so if you you say okay I'm gonna upload and I'm gonna add in all that stuff later no go huh, so you got to create it but I mean I always put in mind afterwards but so, so what you're doing is if you're idea. uploading straight from like iMovie or something yeah then it, when you're uploading into that you fill in the information there right in uh -huh. the iMovie window uh -huh. and then the um, the I tags have... and everything and then set it to go Interesting. I, I, I send it straight doing that, so yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a good idea yeah okay. so that's that's one thing and then other thing is you know just have good stuff I mean that's where we're that, you know upgrading equipment and so on but I mean, ultimately, it's just trying to have better content. And I know not everything that we put up is awesome, but some stuff is, you know what I mean? And just try to continually yeah. do your best. Um, yeah, I mean, and having good quality videos is important. But, I mean, I think, um, yeah, the, it's, the content is, I think, more important yeah. than the quality. Like, a lot of times people know it's just like an amateur thing. You know, it's like yeah. you're doing it on at home or whatever so they're not as concerned about having like movie quality editing and that's why we're just trying to be real quality. right but yeah you know, we just, just this is how yeah, i am the real world kind of thing you know and this is like yeah, like reality tv if you talk to me and like <laughs> off this camera and stuff this is yeah. how i am you know and so it's that kind of interesting personal relationship like i watch yeah. my kids a lot more personal go on to youtube and it's like they think they're friends with the people that they're watching right because people are looking like right inside the screen and going hi pa hi friends yeah. and this and that's like they yeah. almost talking back it's like a relationship yeah yeah yeah, no, and, and young kids, like our, my son my, and my nine-year-old son, he spends so much time on YouTube. I mean, we don't have cable TV at home, mm -hmm. but that's like his TV. I mean, he like we have to kind of force him off of YouTube because he'll watch like all day long if he can. You should have him start creating yeah. stuff then. See that's what they what I, Yeah, I mean, actually, when we asked him what he wants to do uh, professionally, it's like he wants to either be a YouTuber or create, um, what is it called, like the, um, like in... Uh, video game like apps or whatever it's like, uh -huh. he's like how old is he like, nine <laughs> yeah you should totally have him so, start yeah, doing it they can yeah. totally do I it keep, i keep encouraging him to, tr to make some 
some videos, but yeah, he hasn't shown interest. But yeah, I got to get him to make at least one. That's why we channel. did startup weekend and so on yeah. because it's a you know it's a framework. So there's so much distractions right and going on. Yeah, I mean, and, and the thing about YouTube it. too is like the longer you're on it, the, the like our channel is like exponential growth. We've been doing it for eight years, and I know really just in the last year it's starting to take off. So I mean, when it was just cats playing piano. If he can start at nine years old and start a channel, and maybe in nine ten years you'll have a real um, following and then you know after that it's just like you know it's like basically you know as long as youtube is around it can be like perpetual income till you retire i mean it can be your retirement income right? so their their websites called yeah. like tube filter and social blade and so on if you mm -hmm. go onto them you can kind of um track and benchmark other sites but it they all a lot of times they list they do like um top channels for the week or top channels for the month and so on based upon views and subscribership growth mm -hmm. and out of that i think it's at least like a third of them are kids-based channels or family-based channels. Hmm. Um, there's also a, um, I don't know what they call it, but there's it's like between eight or nine years old and about 13 or 14 for girls. That's They have some name for it where that's like the golden area for marketing. They right. put a huge chunk of money in that because that's when the girls actually start to get their own money and they start to buy and they buy all kinds of stuff mm. and it's like a huge deal. So you'll see in that age range too, a lot of um, kind of advertising and sponsorship dollars going to channels that that um, have that demographic. Hmm. Yeah. But the gaming is really big too, especially mm. girls doing gaming. It's kind of big because mostly it's dudes, you know, and they're like 30 and, you know, in the mom's basement playing right. games and, right. you know, so you have pretty girls doing games and then that becomes really popular all right yeah. um but it's kind of amazing i don't know the yeah. future is really interesting i mean that's something you can do it's like definitely a home-based business or a business you can run from every, anywhere you know so if you if you're making like millions on youtube i mean that's like the perfect job you don't even really. have to make millions think <laughs> yeah. about it you don't have to yeah. even make millions because yeah. most people on their regular job are, are not going to make millions they're right. going to maybe make something and yeah. I, i'm i know I, as i'm going through this now kind of my thing is networking so i talk to quite a bit of people on it and um, one of my friend's daughter was telling me that she goes oh my god my friend is uh, doing this channel and it's her little sister and and you know she's really popular and this and that I looked it up she had seven million subscribers Wow this girl is guaranteed earning over a million dollars a year Wow and every dollar this is in Hawaii this is in the mainland oh, yeah. every dollar that you make in terms of YouTube ads if you're savvy at all you will duplicate that in terms of Sponsorship deals, brand deals, product placement, something, you know, right, right. You, you, if you're savvy at all. And then actually, if you're making pretty good on YouTube, there are what they call multi-channel networks, almost like a record label. So they basically sign you on, take a percentage of your earnings, and then they're out there trying to get you brand deals and so on. And I'll give you an example. Like a friend of mine who has a channel that has about 500,000 views per month, which is good but not like massive, right? Um, I think they're at about 150,000 subscribers, about 500,000 views per month. We'll get paid just to do a three minute video, 10,000 right now is the going rate. Wow. 10,000. So, you know, you earn For your one video. one video, right? So you do a number of them. Now, I don't know if everybody in the world could do it, but you know, it's a possibility. Yeah. And well, the thing is, if everybody does it, then it's no longer valuable, you know, like but even this, but millions of channels, but there's still going to be some that are popular. I mean, it just depends on, you know, think about yeah. it. Even if you make no money on it, like even if you had no money coming into you, you still have people coming in and going, hey, I saw you on the video. I really and they come in here and they feel like they know yeah. you. Yeah. And that is I mean, your branding. Yeah, that for us, helps your store. For us, it's not about right. making money with the videos. It's about yeah, getting getting our brand out there and, and getting. The information out and, and people re realizing that we're like we, you know we're the experts and right. we know what we're talking about and we right. can help people here so that's really what the most biggest value for us but yeah i mean but i find it intriguing too just like you know how can you i mean i love it i love like if you if you stuff. can double it if, if i can double it a few more times then i can retire on just the youtube income right that's what i'm thinking if it keeps going like the ha way it has been it, it could be a cool but see the funny cool thing about thing. it is that even because your shop is is attached to it that yeah. as your youtube stuff grows then your sales grow right you know what i mean i bet you can correlate it i mm -hmm. bet you if you look at it, you can see okay these things where they're coming from and so on i bet you could put some kind of correlation in there mm -hmm. that okay growth happens here and then it moves kind of simultaneously somewhat yeah. maybe not exact but it definitely i mean it's de i think it's definitely the most effective marketing that we do yeah um and it's free and it actually makes us money so i mean that's yeah. a, like a no-brainer i can't wait till they have more like youtube conferences you, you should come with me next time i'm going again in july for you're gonna be amazed it's like 
what in the heck is this? It's crazy. <laughs> it's it's like, thing, yeah. no, it's crazy when you see all like the groupies and stuff and how these kids react and so on. It's nuts. It's like from a movie or something. It's crazy. It's YouTube like stars. It's nuts. And then yeah. you realize, whoa, this thing is bigger than I thought, and I thought it was big, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Next year, come with come with us. Yeah, I'm curious so. how many people will watch this video and see. But hey, yeah, whatever. Right. If you watch yeah. it and you watch it to this point, we thank you. You so, spent this amount of time with good us. Good title, cool. good description, good keywords. Yep. Good content. And good content, and then um, good looking people. people. Interview, of you, yeah, hot guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For all those girls that watch our videos. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to make 50%. it even. I'm trying to make it even. I'm putting all the stud looking dudes and then all the hot chicks. But yeah. in this industry, you kind of have a lot. Yeah. But then you have more that look like, like, yeah, you just have to like put me. Hot bikini <laughs> girls in, that, the, in between our shots. So, yeah, that, <laughs> whatever. Put a, put a um, nice. Um, well, think about your video that has nice the most thumbnail. views <laughs> is with, um, what was her name again? The one that has the Marina. most views. Yeah. Marina. Yeah, she's doing it, not us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah, and that she looks the, better the, than the us. The thumbnail is important too. Yeah, so yeah, the thumbnails yeah. interesting looking. Yeah. yeah, that's why you find a lot of thumbnails that are on YouTube have like some. Yeah, if you had the thumbnail was us doing this, yeah. you know, I probably yeah. wouldn't have as many it's views. It's a girl in a bikini, and then, and then when you watch it, it's like okay, maybe there's like a two second shot. Selling a girl, camera, right? but it's like something totally unrelated. So yeah, but anyways, it's clickbait, I guess. I don't know. As we learn this, then we'll get better. Yeah. We'll give you some more feedback in the future, maybe. Huh? Okay. So, right. if you guys got comments for us, please leave them down below. Um, we'll answer them. And also, if you have any um, good things to say, please leave them below. If you have negative things to say, please um, just keep it to yourself. Yeah. No thumbs down. Thumbs up. Please subscribe. Subscribe to Blue Planet Surf and StandUpPaddleSurf.net. And we're going to see you another time on another board meeting. Aloha. Aloha.